everybody. Just wanted to, as you can see, the, the, the session's being recorded. So the uh, reason we do this is that um, we will have some repository of this webinar. And if you're not able to um, stay for the whole webinar, you can always come back to uh, our website, alterna.ca, and um, uh, see the whole webinar. So um, I just want to also uh, uh, thank everybody for joining. Thank you so much um, for uh, coming to our Savings Strategies webinar. My name is Carla Giacomini, Director of uh, Marketing at um, Alterna, and I'll be hosting the webinar today. So just gonna take you through some um, housekeeping tips. As I said, the webinar is being recorded. Uh, we are also going to be taking questions. So please feel free to uh, put any questions that you have during the session in the Q&A on the bottom of your screen. And we will um, we'll be um, answering all the questions that we can, um, time permitting. If we don't to get to all the questions, we will actually respond by email to you. Also, um, I just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, we've got Michael Borelli, who is our... Um, uh, our uh, expert today, our guest speaker. We're excited to have Michael um, with us. He's been working in the financial industry for over 22 years, and uh, he's had uh, a number of different leadership roles. He's passionate, he's um, very curious, and he's always, he's a continuous learner. So Michael um, is, is great uh, to have with us today because he has a deep understanding of the importance of building solid and trusting relationships based on integrity, cooperation, and team building. So, um, and I just learned this last week, um, outside of work, I found out that Michael um, is uh, does coaching and he has two young daughters that he coaches and he has a love of music. So really excited to have Michael join us today. Um, welcome and thanks for joining Michael. Yeah, thank you, Carla. Thanks, everyone, uh, for, for joining joining our Lunch and Learn presentation today. I, I'm really excited to speak to you about your financial success and the tools and resources that will create strong financial habits. So today's agenda will focus on the following areas uh, under money savings. So the importance of savings, uh, setting financial goals, budgeting, how to jumpstart your savings, and lastly, we'll set aside a little bit of time for uh, uh, Q&A. So what's important to note before we get started is that everyone is at a different stage in their life. Uh, from student life all the way to retirement, your financial focus will change. And it is important to plan and prepare for the next stage in order to be ready. This all starts with a financial plan, uh, which I'm sure you've already experienced in some form or another. So I think we got a poll question here. Yeah, so um, just to get kind of uh, get started, uh, you know, we uh, we wanted to actually ensure that, you know, you've got some input and and let us know um, about your, um, uh, you know, about how you're feeling. So first question that's on the screen is on a scale of one to five, please rate your knowledge of managing personal finances, including budgeting, savings, vehicles and debt management. So one is not knowledgeable and five is extremely knowledgeable. So, um, and again, the poll's anonymous, guys. So like, please feel free to answer however you, uh, however your situation is. Interesting results already with the uh -huh. it, with yeah, three sure. right in the middle. I know something, but I want to learn more. Yep. So, um, you know, uh, what we're saying to Michael's point, you can end the poll and we'll share the results. There's a lot of people kind of in the middle, right, Michael? Like 47% yeah. are kind of in the middle. Obviously, a lot of some people want to know more. They need help, right, with some of these things. So, and then you've got some other people that maybe have a little more um, more knowledge. So we have a great, great, great mix. And uh, Michael, I'm sure you'll be able to uh, to uh, help and bring some uh, shed some light on to some savings uh, strategies. So. He's, uh, Michael's going to kick it off with the importance of savings and financial goals. Perfect. Thanks, Carla. So save regularly, start early. These are the pillars towards financial success. So building that nest egg will provide you that peace of mind in case of an emergency or an unexpected cost. You have a backup plan. However, consider that putting money aside is only part of the equation. Keeping all of your money in a savings account might not generate the results you're looking for. 
This is why setting short, medium, and long-term goals will help you determine how your savings are allocated. Meaning a family trip next year is much different than your retirement goals. So your investment options will vary. And lastly on, on here, as, the, as it noted on the screen, your mental health is highly tied to your financial success. And studies have shown that people who save for the future feel more positive, sleep better, and experience better mental well-being. So I think it's important to understand that savings is part of your financial success, but it's a very important part of your financial success, not only for money, but also for your peace of mind. Okay, let's move to the next one here, Carla. So how do we set financial goals? You know, before you decide on what investment vehicle is appropriate for your needs, you need to first set these financial goals. It can help you to define your spending, track your progress, and achieve your objectives. If you don't know where to start, take a look at your situation. So where are you in your life stage? Is it student? Is it building towards a home? Is it family life? You know, young kids, older kids? Is it retirement? Is it self-employment? There's so many different stages of your life. Uh, and you need to start to assess your income your expenses, your budget. So budgeting is an, is an important exercise that we'll talk about a little bit more in detail in a few minutes, but budgeting is a huge uh, aspect of your savings goals. Attaching reasons for your goals uh, can make them more meaningful. For example, building an emergency fund so you can afford to pay rent if you lose your job or get rid of a credit card debt so you can save money for a home down payment, car repairs, setting aside money for a trip or saving enough money to retire. There's a reason for the madness. Assigning SMART goals is, an important, is important to consider. In case you're not familiar with the acronym SMART, are you sp setting specific goals? I want to take a trip to the East Coast this summer. I want to build a shed this summer. Uh, not I want to save money. It needs to be specific. How can you measure your goal? the M part of the SMART. How can you measure your goal throughout the process? Is it attainable? Is it realistic? And what are the timelines? Is it short, medium, or long? Th this can be applied to every aspect of your life, but in finance, setting SMART goals is very, uh, very important. Consider all the necessary pieces of a plan, not just the goal, but the steps you'll take to reach it. Here's a quote that I'd like you to take away. Savings is a commitment not an amount. So I think that's really good to, to think about. After you've identified and vetted your goals, mark them down. This can keep objectives clear, organized, and tangible. When you write it down and when you measure it, things get done. Next slide, please. So some examples of savings goals. So short-term goals could be a weekend getaway or one room renovation, maybe a golf trip. Maybe a medium type of goal is a new or used car purchase, a down payment for a home, a family trip to Disneyland. Uh, and then a long-term goal is what do you want your retirement to look like? Uh, education costs for your children. And maybe you want a country property uh, later on. There, these are examples of different goals along different timelines. Having a plan is the first step to achieving financial success. When we look into a uh, building an emergency fund, this is something that we, a lot of people talk about and, and people are scared because I don't have any more money to, to, to put aside. I, I can't save money. It's a small commitment to consistency. And so you're looking to save three to six months worth of take-home pay. And you have to start now. It could take months or years to build up an emergency fund. It doesn't happen overnight. But you can rely on this fund if you know you get laid off from your job, you might get sick, a family member might get sick, or you have other unexpected uh, expenses. Keep the money in a separate savings account with low or no fees. Don't rely, so many people do this, don't rely on credit cards, bank loans, personal lines of credit for an emergency. Quickly, you can find yourself owing a large amount of money uh, that you're using at a high interest rate. 
Don't spend your emergency fund on non-emergency expenses. And we see this all the time that some people, great intentions, maybe bite a little bit too much, and then they have to start pulling off of the emergency fund. Go small, but don't touch it. So 10 bucks, $20, whatever you can afford, start to do that slowly. Just keep that as a pure emergency fund. Discipline is important. And then talking about managing debt, uh, this is another aspect of savings. People like to think about savings as just putting money aside. It's more, it's more than that. It's managing debt is an, an area that we shouldn't neglect. Um, and again, on this slide, a lot of these points are easier said than done. Spend less. Of course, that's going to help you. You know, the question to always ask is, is this a want or is this a need, right? We need, you know, water, shelter, electricity, things like this. Um, we might not need uh, the latest iPhone, for example, right? So avoid accumulating more debt just because it's offered to you, like a retail credit card. doesn't mean you should take it. Like for myself, I have one credit card. That's it. All my life. I've had one credit card, I collect points, but I don't want to get another credit card because one is hard enough to handle. <clears throat> so just because you qualify for that million dollar mortgage, do you need to take that whole amount? Increase your monthly payments. You know, I'll have a, a little bit more to say on this in the coming slides, but if there's an opportunity to increase your savings, do it. Even if it's $5, even if, even if it's $10, that little bit will compound over time and you will be able to build that emergency fund uh, and, and manage your debt a little bit better. If you hold a balance, uh, you know, in your credit card, for example, are you in the right product? Do you, do you know that there's low interest credit cards that, uh, you know, is not at 19.99% and could be at 13%? Do you need a term reducing loan as opposed to a revolving line of credit? You know, if you own a home, are you utilizing the lower borrowing rates to consolidate your debt? These are all just strategic ways of lowering your interest costs, where then it will allow you to put small pieces aside for that rainy day or for that purchase short term, medium term, long term goal. Next one, Carla. All right, we got a poll question. Yeah, we're going to, again, um, you know, thanks for thanks for that, Michael. And we're going to now talk about like personal budget. So do you have a personal budget? Um, you know, not yet sure. Um, yes, planning to get started. Don't always uh, stick to it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yes, it's the guide that I spend and save to. So just to get some thoughts. And again, it's all anonymous. So just answer as truthfully as possible. Okay, wow. So. Looks like uh, a lot of people do have a budget, um, but again, like those New Year's resolutions, very <laughs> hard to stick to it, right, Michael? That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's okay. We're going to end the poll. We're going to show the results, um, so we can share the results there. As you can see, most people over fifty percent have a budget, so that's fantastic because that's the start, right, Michael? That's right. That's absolutely the beginning. The hardest part is that first little step in just sitting down, you know, old school piece of paper and a pen and, or a pencil, and write it down. Put that budget together, right? Now, the second piece of it is sticking to it. So there's two sides of it, right? And that's the hard, harder yeah. part in the end of it is sticking to it. It's easy to change that budget in, uh, on a whim, but it's hard to stick to the plan. And you know what I wrote on here in my notes uh, just before the presentation is it's okay to say it's not part of my budget. I didn't, it, this isn't part of my budget. And, and that's okay to say that to yourself and even to others. Because you have a plan and you're sticking to the plan and you will be successful in that way. So uh, really happy to see that most people here have some uh, uh, budget or at least they're or planning on creating the budget. Fantastic. So now you're going to tell us all about budgeting. Yeah, it's a big one. You know, <laughs> uh, budgeting is that roadmap to help you achieve your financial goals. So developing the, uh, a budget and taking the time to really think about your income and spending has its benefits. It will help you to prevent overspending. It will help you to decrease your debts. 
It will provide you the ability to save to meet your short-term and long-term goals. You know, when we talk about protect and prepare for possible financial difficulties, what, what could that be? It could be a reduction in hours or losing a job. Your car breaks down. We don't always think about that. Health concerns that might not be covered by benefits or OHIP. Maybe you have family obligations that you need to support people, you know, outside of your most immediate family. You know, what are, what are also the large investments that you're saving towards? You know, so you have to think about it in short term, medium term and long term goals. So you set your goals, then you start creating your budget based on those goals that you've already set for yourself. Having that budget helps you to avoid spending more than you than you have. It helps to cover your cost, helps you to prepare for the unexpected. It creates a blueprint to help you manage credit and debit wisely. And it's to take control of your hard-earned money. Again, it's okay to say to yourself, that's just not in my budget. Let's move to the next slide. So how uh, to build your budget as we just, we just spoke about. So do you know what your goals are? What are some of the things that you want to achieve? Do I know what I pay my, out monthly on fixed expenses and overhead? So what are the fixed expenses right um you know you know you got to pay for food and you have to pay for uh, uh you know heat you need to pay for your mortgage or rent there are certain fixed things that you need to make sure that you pay right um <clears throat> do you know the term the amount of payment the payment frequency and due dates for all of your debts so it includes your credit cards loans lines of credits and etc if you have that in your mind and, and, and what the, that amount of payment is and what the payment frequency is, then you can manage it a lot better. Here's a big one. Do you know what you spend on daily living expenses and do you keep track of it? And, and based on that poll, we try to do our best to, to keep track of it, but you know our, our lives are busy and we have lots of thing, moving parts. And sometimes that's not always at the forefront. I, you know, I would recommend to you take a look at that budget, you know, at every pay, right? So if you get paid every two weeks, why don't you, you know, take a look at the budget. How is this working into my budget? Another thing to consider is do you have that emergency fund? If not, how much can I set aside each month uh, or, or each pay or each month to build up an emergency reserve? For those of you that own homes, it's a general rule of thumb that your housing costs should equal less than 30% of your gross monthly income. So you may take that away and say, hmm, I really need to write this down and see if I'm within that 30%. In addition, your total monthly debt payments, so not only including your housing costs, but also your unsecured line of credit, your loan, your car payment, your credit card, that shouldn't exceed 40% of your monthly income. So obviously you need to be, you should have a little bit more in the reserves and what, and, what, uh, and what you have than what you're spending on debt, right? Another thing that people don't think about uh, and they typically forget when doing a budget, things like kids activities. I have both my daughters in competitive soccer. It gets quite expensive. I need to put that into my budget. And sometimes I can't go to that tournament because that's just not part of the budget that I've put into uh, put together. And that's okay. You know, another big one, pet expenses. For those of you who have pets, do you always think about, I think I just heard on the radio that it's about $3,000 a year, or at least put aside $3,000 a year for those unexpected pet uh, expenses. You know, uh, uh, other, other things that people forget are retirement, um, re re retirement considerations. What about post-secondary education for your children? Are you helping, are you gonna help them? And you need to start thinking about that when they're very, very young, not I'm going to you know, post-secondary education, I'm going to post-secondary school next year, uh, how can I save for that? You know, are you maybe a, a mature student returning to school? Do you have elderly parents who will be in need of assistance? I'm thinking about my own parents and they're starting to get to an age where maybe my, fam my, my brothers and I need to start supporting them. Where's that money going to come from? I need to start, I think about that. Uh, and then obviously the emergency fund. 
Let's go to the next one. This one is my most uh, is my favorite one. This one is one that people need to really take heed to. Pay yourself first. This is extremely important. And you know what? I wrote this one down. Another one to remember and take away. Treat savings like any other reoccurring bill that you must pay each month. It shouldn't be an option. It, it should be built in. So just like you know you got to pay your credit card bill. You got to pay your Rogers or Bell bill. You know you got to pay your Enbridge or Union Gas or whatever it is. You have to pay those. Savings goes in with that. And, and so paying yourself first means to set aside your savings before you spend on other things. And that was another quote that I, I had here. Do not save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after savings. So you pay your bills, you put in your savings accounts, maybe you put it into a TFSA or an RSP or regular savings account, then you have your spending money. Um, you know, Put a set amount of money away each paycheck without thinking about it. Set it and forget it. It needs to be, the machine needs to be built, right? You build the machine. Once the machine is built, it runs and you don't have to do anything. Periodically, you have to maintain it. You have to add a little oil here and there. You know, you have to do a little bit of fixing, bring in a couple new parts. But once that machine is built, you go and let it run. It's easier if you don't think about that money before you're tempted to spend it. Uh, you know, when you set when you set aside money before you spend it, you'll become more successful at savings because you don't have to rely on how well you can stick to your budget. So we had in the poll, I have a budget, but I don't always stick to it. One way of of, of automatically, or you don't, you don't have to think about it, is automatically pay yourself first. There's this 50, 20, uh, 30 uh, rule. Right. Um, we recommend putting 50 percent of your money towards needs, 30 percent towards wants and 20 percent towards savings. I like to go a, a 50 percent towards your needs. And that also includes your debts, you know, 25 to 30 percent towards, um, you know, savings for now, which is your wants and 25 or 30 percent to saving for the future. And you should never neglect one or the other. You shouldn't do, oh, well, I got two out of three and that's good enough, right? You, you should really think about balancing how you're doing your, your and adjusting your spending accordingly. Um, so again, do not save what is left after spending. Spend what's left after savings. I'll it give you- like a, a shift, it's a right. shift like in, in, in thinking, right, Michael? Like, it, it's, you know what I mean? Like, because everybody always thinks, well, whatever's left over, but it's a, really a shift in thinking. It's exactly, it is a shift in thinking and it's getting ahead of all that spending that you want to do. And, and so I give you my own personal example, right? When I started uh, uh, in the financial industry, I started as a teller and I started with <clears throat> paying my bills and setting, you know, uh, uh, $50, right? Every pay going into a savings account. After all my bills were paid, I ended up with 400 bucks every two weeks. That's what I had. So as a teller, that was a lot of money. But as I grew in my career and I made, I made some more money, that $400 has never changed. I have $400 on, my, on myself for every two weeks to pay for my, you know, if I have to grab something for lunch, maybe my gas, uh, maybe a quick, uh, you know, something for entertainment, right? But that's never changed. What's changed, however, is as I've grown in my career and I've made more money, I've increased my savings to my savings account. I've increased, you know, 20, 20 bucks here. Then I've increased my money, uh, my um, payments towards my kids' RESPs, the educational savings plan. I did another 25 bucks there. Then I did another $25 into it. As I grew, I grew where all my money was going. My personal spend never changed. And so it's difficult to do. And with inflation and, and all that, it's great. Well, if you make a lot of money, that's easy to do. But if you look at it that way, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It's where it's going. So I always pay myself first part of my bills and, and then have just a little bit for my, my entertainment. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's something yeah, that's no. really worked for me. Great advice for sure. Okay, let's go to a couple of tips. 
So we have, um, you know, at Alterna, we have a great application for our digital banking. We've recently uh, renovated it, and it's a really slick system that's going to help allow you to uh, um, track your spending. So, you know, uh, it's available for iPhone and Android users, um, easy to download. But again, one thing that I noticed that a lot of our members and just in general people, they don't look at their finances enough, right? And you can't go weeks or months not looking at your finances. The mobile app is an easy way to, let me check what's in my checking account, what's coming in and out, what's coming in and out of my uh, savings account, and what's coming in and out of my credit card. This is a, also another way to avoid fraud or at least to be get in front of fraud quickly. Don't wait 30 days to look at your accounts. And so you use this app, uh, application, the digital application mobile app, as a way to protect yourself, number one, and to know that you're sticking with the plan. And if you're not sticking with the plan, it's a great reminder and a reset to say, mm, I really shouldn't have done it this way. We're going to make mistakes all along the way. It's not about the mistakes that we make. It's about how we fix it and adjust. So I really shouldn't have spent that money on that booster juice. It was like $9, $10, right? Next month. So I true. Okay, hey, so true, right? Or that oh Starbucks or that latte or whatever. Next month, I'm going to do it a lot less. Or I'm going to remember how I feel today about spending that $10. And next month, I'm going to say, no, no, no. I don't want to do that. This is what the mobile app can do for you, right? Because it's quick and easy. The other one is a calculator from uh, the CRA. We like to use the CRA because it's available to all Canadians out there, uh, a great budget planner. And as you can see on here, it starts asking you, you know, what's your age? You know, how much are you making? What are your bills like? Well, how much, you know, a mortgage? What are your home costs like? It's just good to start thinking about these things. And even if, if time is of the essence, right? It, even if you just spend 10 minutes thinking about your finances and where that money is allocated, it's going to do you a world of wonders. So we, th those are two tips that we have using the mobile app and, and even the CRA budget planner is a, is a very good one. Okay, we're gonna get to the next poll. And this was the general question um, about, uh, you know, have you set uh, your financial goals for 2024 and beyond? And if you haven't, not a big deal. We're here to help you guys, right? And uh, mm -hmm. we got lots, Michael and his team can help for sure. Okay, so seems like uh, a lot of people are still working on it, which is good. Some people haven't started yet, but it's early in the year. Um, yeah. so, so not a problem. Like, you know, there's always time. I, I think you you said it's never too late to start, right, Michael? No, no, it's, it's never too late yeah. to start. And, yeah. you know, setting your financial goals. So, yeah, 50% of people are working on it. The other yeah. people, yeah. other 50, uh, you know, 20, 20, call it 25%. Yes, I have my goals. And other ones, not yet. Hopefully, right. this yeah. presentation will help to you, you know, spur you to to kind of think about it a little bit more. And for the people who have those financial goals, that's great. That's part one. Part two is sticking to that, sticking to the budget, sticking to your uh, rigor and discipline of of financial success. You have to stick to it. You have your goal. The only way to achieve that goal is sticking to the plan. Okay, hey, great. So now we're going to, Michael's going to take us through how to jumpstart your savings um, and give us some tips here. Yeah, you can, you can go even to the next one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for that, there's a lot of rep repetition here, right? But there's a reason why there's, it's repetition. Because through repetition and hearing that same message over and over again, then it can get implemented. We don't want to give you all this, you know, it's, it's not um, rocket science, but it is important to uh, lay everything out, write it down, and then stick to it. So when we talk about, you know, the four steps to savings, automatic savings is the best way to make your savings fund grow. When you sit with an advisor, most of the advisors are going to say to you, like, let's look at how we can save you money. Let's look at how we can set it and forget it. Let's create this machine for you to run all the time, 24 hours, it's going to run for you, but we need to take the time to do it. That's why I really do believe it's important to sit in with somebody, right? Yes, you could do it online, or yes, you could do it over Zoom or over a phone call, but meeting an advisor face-to-face, -face, asking those hard questions, and having an expert talk to you about, listen, I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen this, here are your options. This is what, what 
you know, these are the path, pathways that you could go down to. But automatic savings, um, you know, an automatic transfer from your checking account to your savings account to take place every month or bi-weekly on your pay uh, is very important to do. If you haven't done that, but right after you get off of this one, uh, off of this presentation, set it up. That's, you will be happy. And if you're saying you don't have enough money or, or money is tight, do $5, do $10. Whatever you can do, it will add up. Uh, growing your savings. So you need to understand what that advisor can do for you. You have to go to an expert in order to get, to be fully educated on everything, right? Again, you can read online, you can get all these different things, but when you come into the branch and you speak with an advisor, we're prepared. We have all the tools and resources and all the educational literature around us. And we take workshops and, and seminars to, to um, better our understanding and learning too. So a reliable advisor um, should be willing to answer all of your questions for like simple investments like savings accounts and GICs. You come into the branch, be sure to ask about limits on those investments, you know, terms such as when, when you can take out your cash out of your investments, you know, make sure that the investment matches your needs right? Uh, a, a good advisor will under will get to know you a little bit, understand what your needs are, and, and recommend products and services that benefit you. Um, you know, for example, if you're getting married next year, you probably don't want to invest in a five-year GIC because you're getting married next year and you might need that money next year. So for more complex investments, right? And if there's you know, a, a significant amount of money that you're talking about, you, you wanna check with a licensed financial advisor. We have lots of wealth advisors who have different options and you, you don't know what your options are until you meet them. And so I think it's good to have a general understanding of what all your um, uh, investment options are uh, in order to, uh, to make the right decision. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, tips and best practices. So I like this one too. My mother taught me very early and all my brothers, check your receipts, go through your receipts. After you go on your, your shopping trip, you know, even to the grocery store, are you looking at the receipt going line by line and making sure you got charged accordingly? I, I'll never forget that. And I might be a stickler and I might be that guy that holds up the line, but you know what? In this day and age, it's important to count all the pennies. So check your bills, spot mistakes and overcharges. Pay less in late fees and interests and penalties. Don't neglect to open up your mail. Look at that, that bill. Look at it a little bit more you know, intensely. Get errors corrected before it's too late, right? If you wait 90 days, a lot of bill companies will say, I'm sorry, you waited past you know, the time to, to, to fight it. Uh, it's in your terms and agreements. Get in front of it quickly. Look at your reoccurring bills and utilities and call them to see what options you might have to reduce your bill. Many companies will offer lower rates and alternatives just because you ask. I'm, I'm always shocked that people's cell phone bills or not even cell phone bills, but like their total um, um, telecom package, $200, $300. I call every six months I call. And I was like, okay, what kind of credits you got you're, you're going to offer me today? And if you're not going to offer me any credits, I'm going to go to the next company. Right. And so you have to be you have to advocate for yourself. Cancel subscriptions and memberships that you don't use. I mean, we are all streamers, you know, Disney, Netflix, Prime, Apple, you know, your your maybe your cable. Do you need all of them? Think about it that way. How to save on food. You know, are you eating breakfast out all the time? Are you bringing your lunch or buying your lunch? Uh, do you do you cook one big dish on the weekends and freeze it? You know, you plan. Do you plan to eat most of your meals at home? And if you do want to go out to a restaurant, are, are you researching local deals for that night? Have you considered shopping with a friend or a family member at discount supermarkets and split the quantities? Like my, my brothers and I, we we you know we'll get. We just did the Italian sausage just over the weekend, where you buy the whole shoulder and we made it ourselves. It's a labor of love and it takes a long time to do, but at the end, we just saved a ton of money for a 40 It tastes much drink. better, right, Michael? Oh, I mean, there's no nitrates, <laughs> there's nothing in it. It's pure, it, exactly. it's pure oh, organic yeah. stuff here, yeah. right? And so for $40, I, I have at least 15 meals. 
right? And so when you when you when you do it that way, it makes a big difference. You, if you have people that you can trust uh, in your circle, maybe you can split stuff. Another quote. You can make money two ways, Carla. You know the answer to this. How you you can make money? I'm not even. Two gonna, ways. I'm not even going to try. Well, stop spending, I guess. And then yeah, make more income. or spend less. That's right. Exactly. Make more or spend less. Exactly. Up to you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, um, sure. <clears throat> so you know, set a budget, stick to it. Discipline is the key. You know, most people spend around ten percent of their income on food. Uh, there, there are some small but significant ways to maximize your shopping budget. Make a list, stick to it. You know, bonus points for meal planning in advance so you don't buy produce and other perishables that'll go bad before you eat them, right? Um, consider buying in bulk, purchasing in-season fruit and vegetables. That's another thing that we do uh, in my family is if it's not on sale, I'm not buying it. Guess what? We're not having steak, you know, this week because it's not on sale and that's okay. And so our, even our eating habits have changed. Uh, I don't know if you use certain apps that um, price match. Oh, for right? sure. Yeah, yeah everybody that's a great idea. Using, yep. Yeah, uh, we yeah, should all be using app, yeah. and Don't be ashamed that you're holding up the line. <laughs> because everybody else is going to try to do that. You need to, uh, you know, uh, pinch your pennies, especially in, in times like this. Uh, what else we got here? How to can keep control of your credit card. Don't make only the minimum payment. Pay more if you can. If you are carrying a balance, get a low rate card. Uh, transfer the balance to a line of credit or, or another credit card that has an offer. Like, for example, right now at Alterna, we have a 0% nine month, no interest. Okay, take advantage of that. Take that other credit card balance, move it over. You pay 0% interest for nine months. Uh, your, you know, your financial security requires you to review your habits and find ways to reduce spending whenever you're able. Ask yourself, do you really need to upgrade your perfectly good phone? Does your couch really need to be replaced? Do I really need this is a good way to gut check your needs versus your wants and will help you to reduce unnecessary spending. Okay, so I do want to leave some time. So how are we with time? We're at 12. Well, we've, yeah, and we've got a few more, just a few more slides. We're almost yeah. there. So um, yeah, time. let's, yeah, perfect. So we're at uh, Save the Change. There's different ways that yeah. you, there are different uh, uh, tools that you can utilize. We have something called Save the Change where you save on every, uh, every debit card purchase, rounds up to the next dollar, and it goes into your savings. We also have a nest egg term deposit where you might say, well, I don't have the minimum 500 or $1,000 to put into a term. I got 20 bucks. Can I do something with this a little bit more than a savings account? Well, the nest egg term deposit allows you to put in money periodically, maybe every two weeks, every, every month, you put in 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks. You get the compounded interest. Uh, and if you want to learn more about that, it's a really good product for, for a lot of people. Again, you know, schedule those automatic reoccurring transfers from your checking to your savings, TFSA or RSP, and using your, your alternate debit card to take advantage of our buyer protection and extended warranty program is also another way to set it, forget it, utilize the tools and resources around you to be successful. Yep, you don't have to buy that. Uh, you don't have to buy the uh, extended warranty at Best Buy, right? You've already got it when you use your your debit card for sure. Right, and exactly, yep. and 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 a lot of people might have a lot of questions around that. That's okay. Come and yep. see us. We'll explain yep. it all to you. Uh, let's go to the next one. You know, these are a few examples of saving options uh, that, that, that can be included in your plan and to achieve your financial goals. So, I'm, I, you know, I don't want to spend too, too much time on this one. But again, on the on the left, GIC, term deposits, you know, it's uh, guaranteed, which is a great benefit, guaranteed return on interest, maybe a lower interest than some of the other options, but it's guaranteed. Right. And you can do different terms, one year term, two year term, three year term really can help you to decide whether this is part of your short term, medium term or long term goals. We have a, there's a tax free savings account that many Canadians should take advantage of. And, and the, the a tax free savings account is you um, don't pay taxes on the interest you earn. OK, so all anything you put in money, anything you earn on that, you don't pay any taxes on it. 
And so this is a great way you want to save for a trip and you have a trip planned in the next couple of years, you put some money into a TFSA, you might invest it into a GIC within the TFSA, any of that interest that you make, not taxed. And then the RSP is another thing that you always need to consider because hopefully, God willing, you'll, you'll live a long, a long life and you're going to need to plan for the future because we don't want to work until we're 100. And so the uh, re, uh, um, registered retirement savings plan is all about tax deferral. It's not that you don't pay tax. It's whatever you put in there is deferred to when you retire. When you retire, you're not making a, a large salary. You're going to be paying less in taxes. Again, there's a whole bunch of different things on here. And you might get overwhelmed saying, well, I don't have to hide. You know, this frazzles me. I'm not a financial kind of person. That's why you need to come into us. Just like a mechanic, a car mechanic. You got to find a car mechanic you trust. But anytime then, once you find that person that, that you trust, anytime you have a car question, you go to that mechanic. You can research yourself, but you don't know if you're right or wrong. You don't know if that's the right part or if that's the right way of fixing it. It's why you go to the expert. That's why you come to us for your financial uh, questions. Yep, that's great. And, you know, to your point, tax-free savings, we can, you can contribute up to 7,000 this year, which is great. Um, and then, and that's cumulative, right? Uh, if you don't put the whole 7,000 in this year, right, Michael? That's right. I, I, don't quote me if I'm wrong, but I think we're at like 96,000 or something like that. Yeah, totally I think you're in and around, yep, from the, to from this inception of the program. That's right. So say, for example, I use 100,000 as an example, right? So you can put 100,000 TFSA and say you made $5,000 off of that. Well, if it's not in a TFSA, take half of that and that goes towards taxes. So now you only made 2,500, as opposed to if it was in a TFSA, the whole 5,000 is yours. Yep. And then also RSP deadlines, the uh, February 29th. So, you yep. know, keep that in mind as well. Right. So um, great savings options. And then we're going to talk about compound interest, Michael. Yeah, and, and, and compound interest. Uh, where am I here? You know, the earlier you start saving, the more you will accumulate uh, with compound interest. This is where the interest earned previously is included, which will help to grow at an accelerated rate. Right. So you have one hundred dollars and you make whatever five dollars off of it. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to be now doing interest on $105. Then you make another maybe $6. Now you add the $5 and the $6 to the $100, and you uh, apply the interest rate on that for the next time. So as you can see with the example on the screen, compound interest can significantly boost investment returns over the long term. And again, I might not know what compound interest means. It, this is a scary word for me, and I'm getting all flustered, right? That's okay. Come and see us and we can break it down. That's why I like to see people because we can take the time, my undivided attention to you and take the time to explain things until you understand it because you can't go any forward, any, any, any forward if you don't understand the first steps, right? Great. Thanks for, for that, uh, Michael, for sure. Um, we're now just going to kind of wrap it up with the eight, uh, eight step guide to savings. Yeah, it, you know, the first step to starting saving money is figuring out how much you spend, right? Keep track of all your expenses. Your budget should show what your expenses are relative to your income so that you can plan your spending and limit overspending. If you can't save as much as you'd like, it might be time to cut back on some expenses. Uh, you know, identify non-essentials such as entertainment or dining out that you can spend less on. Look for ways to save on your fixed monthly expenses, such as your car insurance or your cell phone plan as well. You know, again, one of the one of the best ways to save money is to set a goal. Start by thinking about what you might want to save for, both in the short term, one to three years, and the long term, you know, uh, five plus, ten plus. Then estimate how much money you'll need and how long it might take you to save. After all your expenses and income, your goals are likely to have the biggest impact on how you allocate your savings. For example, if you know you're going to need to replace your car in the near future, you can start putting away money now, uh, right now. So be sure to remember your long-term goals. It's important that the planning for retirement doesn't take a back seat to shorter-term needs. There still needs to be a component of pay your bills, pay, your, uh, pay yourself first, pay for now. Look for savings for now and savings for the future. 
you know, review your budget and check your progress every month and adjust as needed. Great. That's great advice for sure. Thanks so much, Michael. It's been a lot of, lot of great tips and advice from you. And we're going to head off into, um, into the questions. And we have a number of questions from um, our members. Uh, there's some that are, there's a few people that are asking about the effective budgeting tool. So what I can tell you um, is that uh, we are going to be sending out a follow-up email after the webinar, and we'll actually provide you with where you can get that budgeting form so you can get started started. Okay, so hopefully that will help. That was a few a few different uh, members asked that question. Um, there's another, um, you know, question, I think you also answered it in yeah. a lot of different ways. But you know, how do you stick to the budget, right? High cost of living inflation, although inflation looks like it's stabilized now, right? But definitely like grocery costs are even, you know, just going to the grocery store eating has become more expensive, right? So maybe you want to recap, Michael, some of the ideas you you have. Um, so like, I mean, it, it, it's a hard thing to do when we're so used to our patterns and our habits, you know, all this time leading up into COVID. And then after COVID, things have changed a lot, right? So, you know, I'm always used to eating Dorito chips and buying, you know, like 10 bags of Dorito chips. And that's what I just, that's what I do. And I'm not going to change, right? It's, you need to start thinking about breaking some of those habits, right? And so going to the grocery store is a big way because a lot of people talk about the, you know, um, uh, food and the high cost of food. Mm -hmm. There are ways of minimizing that cost, right? I did find 99 cent apples, uh, Royal Gala apples at No Frills. I found it. I said, yeah, oh, and to your point, use that flip app, right? You got to look at those deals, right? That's right. That's one yeah. of the ways. And stock yeah. up, right? Stock up um, and save, right? Exactly. Because you know what? It does, this is not easy. Nobody's saying that this is easy to do. It's going to take time. As another example, my, my car insurance. I don't stay with the same company. I, you know, every, maybe every two years I switch, switch because I take that whole day to call insurance companies to, what are you offering? What, how low can you get it? What, you know, here are some of the benefits that I'm looking for, right? I, I take that time, right? It, it's important for me because I save money that way. So that's why I'm saying it's not an easy task, but it is an important task to do and set aside. So thinking about, do you need a landline and a cell phone? Do you need Disney, Apple, Netflix, uh, Paramount? Like I can just keep... Rhyming them off Hulu and whatever it is. Like, do you need all of them? It goes on and on. <laughs> right? It goes on and on. But that's 20 yeah. bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Yeah, the small eliminate... amounts add up, right? Right. Michael? And this is the difference is when you eliminate something, don't say, oh, all of a sudden I got an extra 20 bucks to spend. No. Take that $20 and right away put it into a savings account automatically from your check, from your checking account when you get paid. You didn't see that $20. The $20 is already spent. It's just, where did you put that $20? It's not going towards whatever, Netflix. It's going to now my TFSA because I'm planning a trip in two years. Don't get caught in when you, like, for example, I, I, I paid off my car, right? And now I have an extra $200 every two weeks. So $400 a month. I did not say to myself and my wife, I didn't say, okay, now we got $200. How can we spend this this month? I put that $200, I allocated a little bit more to my kids' RESP, a little bit more to my, my own RSP, and a little bit more to my TFSA. And you know what? I do need a little bit more spending money, so I took $75 for myself. So $75 for myself, and then $125 automatic savings. So it is possible to do it, and you don't have to be a large amount of money, small amounts. So, Michael, we have something in the same vein, you know, someone saying, hey, you know what, I've got a lot of credit card debt. How, what can I do? And I know that we've got, uh, we do have a credit card that's got is, you know, 0% balance transfer, but any tips on that? Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be products that are going to help you. Of course, a, a balance transfer is going to help. And it Maybe gives explain you... what that is, right? Yeah, like, so, yeah, so say you have $10,000 on a credit card, that's 19.99%. Which is kind uh, of normal, right? Not Michael. That's kind yeah. of, yeah. Oh yeah. That's normal. And actually retail credit cards are going to like a Home Depot credit card or a Canadian tire credit card is going to be even higher sometimes, 21% right. or 24%. You have this balance. If you take up an alternate uh, credit card right now, 
you can transfer the whole 10,000 into the new credit card at 0% for nine months. So it buys you some relief for nine months. The bigger question is what's gonna happen after that nine months? Are you just gonna continue to keep that $10,000 balance? And this is where a consolidation loan comes into play. I, I, I firmly believe that if you're getting in over your head or you're getting weeded and you have a line of credit that's at 5,000, you have an, a, a, a credit card at $8,000, you might have another thing at you know $6,000, consolidate it, put it into a loan, that means consolidation, in my opinion, means close all those other ones. Close it. Close the loan, close the credit card, close the unsecured line of credit, and put it into a consolidation term-reducing loan, meaning that I have a, a, a perfect guideline as to when this money is going to be paid off. Because when you keep things in a revolving credit piece, which means you can pay it, but you can also use it again, it's, it's a perpetual, right? It's just a big circle, big circle. I pay it, I use it, I pay it, I use it, and I never get anywhere. Consolidation loan will allow you to say, okay, I'm going to pay off now this $15,000 in five years. Stick to it. I'm going to pay $200 every two weeks. In five years, I'm going to be done this $15,000 and it's done. And five years comes a lot quicker than you think. Then you're going to you're gonna be, and even by doing that, you still should put away $10, $20 to a savings account because that will add up and don't touch it discipline. Yeah, absolutely. Discipline. You keep mentioning that. So definitely very important. And, um, you know, uh, Jane, uh, one of our members is asking how to seek out low interest credit cards. So we can actually send you some information about that, Jane and Michael, if you do want to get in touch with Michael, he can help you out with that for sure. Yeah, like if you this, this scan uh, QR code is an appointment to the Bay Street location um, uh, for our calendar and any of the bankers are available, it's easy to do. But even if you go on alterna.ca, you can go to any of the branches that are close to you. And then we show you the products and services. A good advisor will show you everything. And it might be over a couple of appointments, fine, but we show you everything. So you can make an educated decision on what you want to do. If you don't know the gamut of products and services that Alterna has, how can you make the right decision? So another, um, someone, one of our other members is close to retirement um, and they're saying, should, you know, should they still be saving, right? What advice do you, uh, do you have for that, Michael? Yeah, yeah, no, congratulations uh, on getting to retirement for sure. Should you still be savings? You know what? I go back to the first step of financial success is uh, establish your goals. What do you want to achieve in a retirement? Right. And so if, for example, you've decided, OK, I'm going to retire, I'm going to take it easy for a couple of years, but then I want to go on a big cruise that's going to toss ten thousand dollars each. You know, will your pension, will your retirement savings, uh, is that incorporated? Is that trip incorporated in those savings? Right. If it's not, then you might want to think about continuing a savings plan. So say you get a pension couple thousand dollars every two weeks for, for an example, right? You might not want to spend all that money. You might want to still continue to save a hundred dollars towards a TFSA where it's towards your trip. Maybe you don't have a trip that maybe you have a renovation that you're looking at. Maybe you need to support family members. Maybe you want to, what we're seeing a lot of is people gifting, you know, an inheritance early to their children or their grandchildren. And, and that might also take some savings. So I would say you need to set your financial goals first to determine what you're going to need in the future. Yeah, that's a great tip. A lot of uh, parents now are helping their kids to get their first home, right? Because, uh, you know, housing prices are, are pretty high. So there's always something around in the, on the horizon, maybe that you might not have planned for, right, Michael? Right. And you're and you're right. You know, I, I think about this actually all the time. I think about my parents are very I'm very fortunate. My parents uh, are able to give us anything. Right. Like if I need something, I go to my parents. Right. That's right. And now then I start thinking now I'm on the other side of it. Right. And I'm like, now I need to be that parent that provides for my kids so that when my kids come to me and need right. something you're from me, I need. So wait a minute. I need to save some money here because yep. it's not just about me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got another question from one of our members is how do we set up auto savings? 
Yeah, so that's a super easy one, to be honest, right? It depends on where you want to put it. But an auto savings is a pre-authorized transfer. It's all done through the computer, right? Goes, you elect how much you want to, um, how much you want to transfer, for example, automatically from your checking to a savings, checking to a TFSA, checking to an RSP, right? And it, you determine also the frequency. So I would recommend to everyone, it's when you get paid. So say you get paid on the Thursday, everything is out Thursday night or Friday morning. Everything's out. So I get X amount of money that comes into my account on Thursday. I've automatically set up all these different things, which is very easy to do and come and see us and reach out to us and we can help you. It's very easy to do. And then come Friday, I'm left with my 400 bucks. That's what I see in my checking account, $400. All my other money is gone into different areas. So yeah, that, that automatic, that's the best thing to do. Trust me. Yeah, I just want to mention, we've actually got some members that give are giving some great tips here as well in the uh, okay. in the comments. So, um, we, you know, we've got one, uh, one of the members is basically saying, well, you know what, we can, you know, we can cut some stuff out, but you know, you need to still have those little pleasures in life, right? 100%. Um, yeah, so. But which, that's also part of your plan. That's also yeah. part of the plan. You want to have those, yes. those, those pleasures as well. So that goes into, again, you can't, you need to save for it. Sometimes it shouldn't be on a whim uh, in a lot of cases, although sometimes there, there is there, right? But, but for example, my buddy just messaged me, you guys want to do a cottage this summer. Well, I better start looking at my budget. I better start looking at, if that's my goal till then, how am I going to save for that? Yeah, and uh, we have another question about our ESP. So asking yep. if um, if Alterna um, does yes. does your institution do a, have an RSP? Our ESP? Absolutely, um, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And anyone with children should be doing it. I mean, I, I think we went from the hospital to the bank right after to set up the RS, RESP because I want to take advantage of the government giving me money right? The government is going to give us a grant, right? And so, yes, Alterna absolutely has RESP uh, products and different ways to invest uh, in that way. You should absolutely take advantage. And if you haven't done it, uh, but your child is still under the age of 15, so let's say 14, you can still go back and recontribute everything. So that I think, the, I, I think don't quote me, but I think the maximum you get as a grant is $7,500 from the government. So that's about a year's tuition because it's subsidized by the government, right? So 7,500 is about a year's tuition. Hey, take advantage of that. Yeah, and if you good. don't know the answer, come and see us, please. Yeah, and now uh, we have another member that's asking if um, the, the you know branch staff can help support with a consolidation loan. Yep, of course. And and this is, you know, um, there's always different advice that we could provide for you, right? When it comes to a consolidation loan, every institution is a little bit different when it comes to the details of a consolidation loan. But especially if there's Alterna products that you're indebted, uh, we want to help to give you a lower interest rate loan, term reducing loan. And I always say that term reducing loan because you start with 10,000, you start doing, you start making payments, your loan gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. When we look at revolving, we have a revolving, we pay it, we use it, we pay it, we use it, we pay it, we use it. So I like the term reducing loan. Absolutely come and see us so then we can help you to determine what's the best course of action for you. For you. Perfect. Well, we're at time. Um, we have a lot more questions, but we will get back to all the questions that uh, that came in the chat that we weren't able to answer. Thank you so much, Michael, for uh, a great session for sure. I also wanted to mention that um, Michael will be available um, uh, for our next webinar. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about savings and investing um, plans um, and options, uh, Michael's going to be hosting another, ha ha like be a guest for another webinar on January 30th, same time at noon. So you'll all be receiving um, an email with the invite shortly. So if you're interested, please uh, come and join us for that, uh, that webinar about saving and investing um, plans and accounts. And uh, um, you'll learn a lot more about that. So 
just a few things before we leave. We will be sending a follow-up email with a uh, survey. Please, if you take a minute just to fill in the survey, it's very short. It just helps us um, have, you know, make better surveys, make better webinars for you next time, give you information that you're interested in. We always want to actually try to make these more informative and better for our members. Also, as I said, um, we will send out the link to the webinar that's going to be on our website so that you can, um, you know, look at it at your leisure. If you want to go back to something and you thought, oh, let me go back, you can do that as well. And um, uh, that's it, I think, right? Anything, uh, last tips, Michael, I just want to thank you for sure. You had such amazing um, information and tips. I learned a couple of things as well. So um, thanks for joining. Yeah, no, you're welcome. The only, uh, only thing is consistency and, and discipline. Consistency, yeah, and sure. that's for everything. It's not just for finance too, right? I think about Absolutely. the girls that I coach, right? It's about consistency yeah. and discipline. You got to keep at it. Exactly. Yeah. Great advice for sure. Well, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate you joining us today. And remember, we do have another webinar on uh, January 30th at noon. And thanks again, Michael. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.